Hi, my name is Amish Agarwal. I'm an advocate. I practice law. I practice a lot of criminal law, and I've also practiced a lot of narcotics law. So, for some inexplicable, very baffling reason, a lot of people have been reaching out and asking me about narcotics laws. And I said, well, if there is so much of interest, no matter how baffling, inexplicable it might be, let me give a couple of pointers on the very, very interesting narcotics law of India. Going back to how it started, the USA in the early 1960s started a war on drugs, and when it wanted an end on drugs, it wanted not just an end on hard drugs, which were the main problem in the US, but it said, while we are at it, let us go after all possible intoxicants out there. The US started a bunch of conventions internationally. India was attending a lot of them, and ultimately. Because of the pressure across the world, India passed the Narcotic Drugs and Psychotropic Substances Act in the year 1985. It is a very, very interesting piece of legislation. It is very unique. There are several features which are not there in any other laws, which also provide for a punishment. See, so for example, if there is the Indian Penal Code, there is uh, the you know there are several other uh, specialized laws also which provide for punishment for. Acting in contravention of the provisions of the acts. However, the Narcotic Drugs and Psychotropic Substances Act takes a lot of principles of criminal jurisprudence and twists and turns them around a little to suit the purposes of the act a little better. The first question I know all of you are going to ask is, what about a small little joint and nothing more? In India, anything is illegal when it comes to narcotics which are mentioned there in the ndps act which means that cultivation production manufacture sale even possession even consumption is a punishable offense till the year 2014 it was punishable the smallest punishment was punishment was punishable with up to 6 months of imprisonment in the year 2014 they enhanced it and made it one year of minimum punishment for even the smallest quantity of any substance mentioned in the ndps act if it is held by you you go to jail of course we all know people who have been caught smoking a joint by the police they paid a few hundred rupees or maybe a few thousand rupees and they were let off easily but we must remember that the police or any of these specialized authorities if they choose to they can prosecute you very well and it becomes a big problem because or any offense under the ndps act is cognizable as well as non bailable now i have to give a little bit of background on both these kinds of offenses cognizable offenses are those which means that the police has the authority to without any direction or permission from a court of law they can investigate into the matter by themselves a non bailable offense does not mean that bail cannot be granted in it but a non bailable offense only means that compared to say a bailable offense in a bailable offense the police has a duty to immediately release you on bail the moment they arrest you which means that the arrest happens only on paper but compared to that in non bailable offenses once the police arrests you because the offense is cognizable after that they cannot release you on bail by themselves you must apply for a bail before the concerned magistrate or sessions judge who will then consider your case and then will decide whether you should get bail or not which means the moment you are arrested by the police or by any of the specialized departments you will spend a minimum of a few days a few weeks maybe a few months sometimes even a few years in jail having said that if you are in the kind of situation that a lot of people fall in is where the cops catch them and then they harass them and extort money out of them because they know that if we put fear in the mind of the person we'll be able to extort money this example comes to my mind a couple of years ago this man called me up and told me that the police raided his house and uh, you know took a picture of him took took a video of him with a bag of weed in his hand and while he was crying uncontrollably made him confess to the factum of the possession and being the owner of this big bag of weed and he asked me amish what do i do now and i asked him how are you even 
able to talk on the phone why are you not in jail right now and and why aren't your relatives calling me up to get you out on bail right now he said no no they made the video they took some bribe from me and then they left now what should i do i laughed and i explained to him that once the police did not arrest you formally along with witnesses did not seize your contraband did not make a seizure memo out of the contraband then they just wanted a little money from you they don't want to actually prosecute you and they have left you to your own devices after taking a little bribe and of course they have threatened you that they can come back and they they will send you to jail so that they can extort more money from you in the future but because of the fact that you are still out they have not arrested you means that you're a free man that they cannot now prosecute you if you throw away or you dispose of that bag of bag of um, weed and so of course there is the threat of the police arresting you but at the same time let us not get carried away with paranoia if the police do apprehend you or do uh, to a little extent try to bother you if they are arresting you if you will face the consequences then you will be arrested formally there will be a seizure formally as well there will be a couple of other pointers which i will discuss a for little further down in this video now let me tell you some very unique features of the narcotic drugs and psychotropic substances act which are not there in any other general law say for example the indian penal code which houses all the regular offenses such as murder rape dacoity cheating etc under the ndps act a presumption of innocence is reversed in all other general offenses the prosecution must not only prove that you committed the act but must also prove that you had the guilty intention to commit the act a very commonly cited example is that if you fire a gun at an animal and it hits a human being the offense of murder is not made out therefore the prosecution must show that the act was accompanied with an intention to carry out that particular act itself and no other act however in the ndps act there is a presumption that the act that you have done there was the requisite guilty intention behind it and the burden of proving that there was no intention falls upon you the accused person next the evidence act of india says that no confession made to the police or in police custody shall be admissible as evidence the ndps act however provides for a situation where special officers of specialized departments which have been created to enforce laws such as central excise customs law narcotics law and other revenue laws are empowered to collect information and there is judgments of the supreme courts which say that these officers cannot be called police officers and therefore the bar of the evidence act is not there plus the ndps act itself says that these officers can call for any information from anyone and that this information will be admissible as evidence which means that an accused person can also be called by the officers of the department and confessions can be recorded and those confessions can be used against the person who is making that confession which also happened in the riya chakrabarti case where if you were following the case it was coming in the news that the narcotics control bureau was saying that the confession of riya chakrabarti was recorded in which she confessed to whatever the allegations against her were in these kind of situations the defense knows that there is a tendency of coercion by intelligence departments while recording confessions and therefore the moment there is a confession recorded or there is a hint that a confession has been recorded the very next day the counsel for the defense moves an application for retraction of the confessional statement made to the officers of the department before the court the ndps act also provides for special courts in all other cases the criminal procedure code mandates that these are the particular offenses which will be tried by these xyz judges the narcotic drugs and psychotropic substances act mandates that there shall be special courts governed by judges no less than the rank of an additional session judge to preside over these cases which means that these are highly specialized courts no other case but narcotics cases are going on in these special courts another interesting feature of the ndps act is the very very stringent provisions of bail in certain 
situations. Now, the law of bail when it comes to general offenses such as murder, rape, cheating, etc. is that the fact that the person has not committed the crime need not be proved at the stage of bail. At the stage of grant of bail, the court considers only four things. The gravity of the allegations, the possibility from running away from the process of the court and of justice, the possibility of tampering with evidence and the possibility of influencing the witnesses. However, the NDPS Act says that in some situations, not all situations, especially those situations involving commercial quantities of drugs, there shall not only be these four conditions, but apart from that, another condition is also imposed, which is that the accused person, the person, the person applying for bail must also prove that he did not commit the offense, which puts the burden of proof of innocence and that too not at the stage of trial but at the stage of grant of bail upon the accused person and this provision the prosecution tried to invoke in the case of Riya Chakravarti before the Bombay High Court and said that because this is a, a narcotics ring there is a syndicate and therefore there is huge quantities much beyond commercial quantities of drugs being tunneled around therefore Riya Chakravarti also comes under the ambit of this provision where it must be proved by her that she did not commit the offense. The Bombay High Court refused to accept this argument and said that it is clear even from the allegations and from the investigation done so far that Riya was not part of the drug syndicate but she was just a, at worst a consumer of these drugs because of which this particular provision that you must prove your innocence at the time of grant of bail was not applied on Rhea. The rest of the four factors were considered and then the court granted bail to Rhea Chakrabarti. Now at this point of time, I'm sure you must be asking, what do you mean by commercial quantity? Well, the NDPS Act and a notification passed under it makes a distinction between what is a small quantity, what is more than small quantity and what is a commercial quantity of the drug which is prescribed there in the Narcotic Drugs and Psychotropic Substances Act. Now, this is relevant for the purpose of punishment. The small quantity, the punishment goes to one year as I discussed before. And in certain situations with commercial quantities, the punishment can go up to 10 years of imprisonment. Some cases it says there should be minimum 10 years of imprisonment. And in some cases they say on a repeat conviction, there can be conviction for life. There can also be conviction and, and an award of death penalty upon a repeat conviction in commercial quantity matters. For some perspective, ganja small quantity is up to 1 kg and commercial quantity is anything beyond 20 kilograms. Heroin on the other hand, small quantity is 5 grams and commercial quantity is 250 grams. Now because of these strict penalties, the NDPS Act also provides for certain safeguards. The same officers who can randomly collect your statement and use that against you, they are required to report in writing to their superior officers any intelligence or any information received about a possible offense. And there is also the requirement of uh, complying with certain mandates while doing searches and seizures. So if you are arrested, your defense counsel should be able to effectively prevent a conviction because a lot of times the requirements of these provisions are not complied with and only on the basis of that the courts have acquitted several accused persons. Is weed legal? No. The NDPS Act says that the production, consumption, sale etc. of cannabis, raisin and flowers is illegal. However, it makes no such mention of the seeds and the leaves of the cannabis plant. However, there are other legislations. For example, in Maharashtra, the Bombay Prohibition Act of 1949 includes within the ambit of its definition of intoxicants, the seeds and the leaves of the cannabis plant, because of which even ganja, which is legal in several states, is also illegal in the state of Maharashtra. Another popular question that people ask is, what are psychotropic substances? 
There is not really a distinction between narcotics and psychotropic substances under the act. However, a few common examples of psychotropic substances are sleeping pills, date rape drugs, a couple of these party pills, which are all also psychotropic substances, which also, of course, under the various labs of small and commercial quantity are also very, very strictly punishable.